Have you ever wondered how a car engine works? Even as someone who works on cars and engines in my free time, I wasn't completely certain of the whole process. I wanted to know exactly what was happening inside my engines since they have such a great impact on my life and probably yours too. I mean, most of us drive cars powered by an internal combustion engine, so why not learn how it actually works? Before I get into it, this video is sponsored by Mosaic Education, and I want to say thank you for providing the animation in this video. Now let's get into it. The process all begins with a starter motor, which is essentially just an electric motor that, through a chain of gears, causes the internal parts of the engine to begin to rotate. The starter is connected to your car battery and your ignition cylinder, so that when you turn your key, it sends an electrical current to the starter motor, which allows it to spin, causing the engine to crank over. Once the engine is running, it begins pulling air and gas in through the intake manifold for combustion in the cylinders. In older cars, a carburetor would control the air-fuel intake ratio. There would be sucked in through a large hole in the top of the carburetor and mixed with the gas which is pumped from the tank into the carburetor jets and dispersed into the intake manifold. The intake manifold sits on top of the engine and is responsible for dispersing the air-fuel mixture into the cylinders. In modern engines, fuel injectors are responsible for the dispersion of the gas into the intake manifold. There's a fuel injector connected to the intake manifold at each cylinder, and the gas and fuel mix once they are both inside of the manifold. We'll get into what happens with that mixture in a minute. First, let's talk about some of the components on the inside of the engine. The first of these is the crankshaft, which sits towards the bottom of your engine and converts the linear motion of the pistons to rotational motion for the output of power to your tires. As the crankshaft rotates, it causes the pistons to move up and down in each of their cylinders in the engine block. The crankshaft is also responsible for driving the camshaft, or, in many modern engines, the two camshafts. The crankshaft drives the camshaft through a gear and belt or gear and chain system inside the engine called the timing belt or timing chain, respectively. The camshaft causes the valves in each cylinder to open and close, allowing the air-fuel mixture to flow into the cylinders at different times. In each cylinder, there are at least two valves. It varies per engine based on size and type. However, at minimum, for a four-stroke engine, there are at least two valves in each cylinder. One is called the inlet valve, and the other is called the outlet valve or exhaust valve. When the inlet valve opens, it allows the air-fuel mixture to flow into the cylinder, and when the outlet valve opens, it allows the gases to exit the cylinder and flow into the exhaust pipes. Now let's talk about what happens to the air-fuel mixture inside of the cylinders of the most common type of engine, which is a four-stroke engine, what I mentioned earlier. A stroke is one full up or down stride in the motion of a piston inside the cylinder. So that means in a four-stroke engine, a piston will complete four strokes in one full rotation of the crankshaft. Let's take a closer look at one cylinder to observe the four different strokes. The first stroke is called the intake stroke. As the piston moves down, the inlet valve opens, allowing the air-fuel mixture to flow into the cylinder. The second stroke in the process is called the compression stroke. This is when the piston moves back up, compressing the air-fuel mixture, creating more pressure inside the cylinder. During this stroke, both the inlet valve and outlet valves remain closed. Once the piston reaches the top of its stride, the spark plug releases an electrical spark into the cylinder, igniting the air-fuel mixture. Then, the explosion, or combustion, inside the cylinder forces the piston to move downward with more power, which is why this third stroke is called the power stroke. The final stroke in this process is called the exhaust stroke. During this step, the piston is pushed upward again, and the outlet valve is opened, allowing for the burned gas to exit the engine through the exhaust pipes. The cycle of each piston is offset from each other so that at least one piston in the engine is in the power stroke at a time, so that power is always being sent to the crankshaft, allowing for the process to be repeated. Now you may have heard of a spark plug before, but do you know exactly how the spark is created? The spark begins in the battery. An electrical current is carried from the battery through the ignition key and to the ignition coil. Inside the ignition coil, there are two different coils of wire. On the first pass through, the current travels through the outer coil and to the contact points inside the distributor cap. As the camshaft rotates inside the engine, 
It causes the cam to spin inside the distributor cap, which at certain points in its rotation, opens up the contact points and breaks the circuit. While this happens, the current is sent back through the ignition coil, this time on the inner coil, and travels to the rotor inside of the distributor cap. As the cam spins, the rotor also spins and comes in contact with metal connection points inside the cap called the distributor points. When the rotor connects with the distributor point, it transfers the electrical current through that point which is connected to the spark plug inside the cylinder through a thick wire. From there, the spark is sent to the end of the spark plug where it will ignite the compressed gases causing the power stroke in the cylinder. So, that is pretty much everything you need to know about how an internal combustion engine works. This means you're basically a mechanic now. Congrats! Thank you for watching to the end of the video. I put a ton of work into this so I really appreciate you taking the time to watch it. I want to say thank you again to the sponsor for this video, Mosaic Education. You can find more than 1200 3D animations covering a wide variety of topics on their website www.mosaweb.com 3D. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you did, please give us a like and consider subscribing to the channel. It helps us out a ton and we have a wide variety of content about cars. Our regular content revolves more around us fixing cool cars and doing fun stuff with them. However, we also occasionally post tutorial videos like this one. If you have any questions about engines or anything, please leave them below in the comments and I will try to respond with an answer. And if you have any suggestions for other tutorial videos that you'd like to see, leave those down in the comments as well. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.